How's it going today guys? Welcome back to the Rapways. I'm Dan and this is another how-to video from Rapway Marine. So today we're going to try to keep the video um, straight and to the point. So we got this Skidoo Summit 583 1994 model in. Uh, it's in for a whole bunch of work but the thing that we're going to focus on on this video is uh, cleaning the carburetors on it. Something real common, something a lot of you guys do. So let's get after it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is get the air box out of here. Uh, in order to do that, we're gonna have to remove this bolt right there, and then we should be able to fish that air box out of there. Okay guys, so we got our air box removed. That came out real easy. Um, so the next step is we actually have to remove the carburetors themselves. So um, first thing is it's very important to pay attention to which carburetor goes where. Um, you do not want to mix these two up. So as you can see, someone's already labeled this one with an M, meaning mag side. Um, but what that really means is that um, obviously that's not marked on the carburetor. That's just marked on the throttle cap there. But what that means is... The, the PTO side of the engine is the clutch side, or the power takeoff is what that stands for. And MAG stands for magneto, which is gonna be your, your other side or your recoil side, in other words, where the stator is at on this side of the, of the machine. So um, it's very important not to mix these two up, as well as when we get farther along, it's very important not to mix up any of their internal components. So the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and start removing the throttle body um, caps and pulling the slides out. Uh, we are also going to begin removing our lines. Um, we've got our our fuel uh, inlet lines. This is our primer inlet line goes into there. We've got some different uh, overflow lines, some vacuum lines, and then our main fuel inlet that feeds our carburetors themselves. So um, it's very important to not get any of those lines mixed up or anything like that. They obviously need to go back into place. So we'll get to uh, removing these things. All right guys, now that we have all of our fuel lines and hoses removed, the next step is to go ahead and loosen the clamps that hold the carburetors in. Now, while you're doing this, it's a great time to inspect the boots, the carb boots themselves, meaning this part right here, for any cracks. That's a super common thing in all snowmobiles for them to crack. And if they do, it will cause your engine to pull air from there causing some uh, poor running conditions and the engine to run lean. So these boots look to be in pretty good shape, but it's just something to pay attention to. Can definitely cause you headaches in the future. So again, when we pull these carbs out, it's super important to pay attention to what side they went on and not get them separated. So last couple lines to get at here is our our uh, primer lines, one on each carburetor, and they kind of go into the side of the carburetor right before it bolts into the motor. So we'll get them pulled off. All right, guys, once you get that far, you're ready to go ahead and actually remove the carbs themselves. So kind of just wiggle up and down. And there's one. 
So this is the PTO side. So for now, we'll just take it, we'll set it on the bench, and we'll go grab our mag side. Okay guys, so here you go. We've got them both on the bench. Again, I cannot stress enough keeping them separated. So what I do is I set each carburetor on a paper towel like you can see and write PTO on one and mag on the other and then separate the two paper towels so things don't roll in between. Now a previous person wrote a P on the PTO carburetor. Not a bad idea, I just don't like writing on customer equipment so I just I don't do that. Okay guys, so here we've got our mag side carburetor. I'm just gonna do one of the two. The other one will um, disassemble, get cleaned and reassembled in the same fashion that this one does. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is remo remove these four screws around the corner to get your bowl assembly off. Okay, so we've got our four screws removed. Now a lot of times with these gaskets, these are gonna be stuck on there pretty good. So you can go ahead and take the back of a screwdriver and tap on this. You don't wanna use a hammer or you don't wanna hit it much harder than this here. Just kind of give it a few light taps back and forth and it will pop off. There we go. So as you can see, it is very full of rust and varnish in there. Um, as well as the this portion too, you can see is very rusty. That tells me there's a lot of moisture in that fuel and in the fuel system. So the next step we're gonna go ahead and do is remove our pilot jet, which is down there. That's for your idle circuit. Our main jet, which is right here. And our emulsion tube retainer, which is right in there. So for the pilot jet, you're gonna need a very small screwdriver. Uh, this is one I'm running here. Go ahead and unscrew it. Be very careful you don't strip it, especially if they're full of a lot of varnish. Them th the, uh, the portion that the flathead screwdriver rides in, the slot can get very plugged. You can just go ahead and kind of tap that guy out of there. So there's our pilot jet. As you can see, it's quite plugged up. Go ahead and set that off to the side. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove our main jet. The main jet size is a six millimeter. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove that. Again, being very careful, you can see all the junk falling off of that. So there's that guy there that you can see that is open, but uh, full of debris. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove our emulsion tube retainer. That's gonna be a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and we'll remove that guy. Set him off to the side. Okay, so your next step is gonna to be to go ahead and remove your float lever arm here, your float control arm. Um, what I like to use is an automated center punch to remove this pin. Um, if you choose to use a hammer or anything like that, be very careful on these towers. These towers will break off very easily and then this car body is junk. So take your automated center punch, go to the center of the pin, if you can get it right, it should drive it right out. Like that there. There's your pin. Go ahead and set that off to the side. There's your float control arm. Now this needle valve is held in by a small retainer spring. Uh, this just go ahead and goes ahead and pushes off like this. Uh, be very careful not to send this flying across your shop. Because they do have some spring pressure when they come off. And there's that little guy right there. Let's go ahead and set him off to the side in your needle valve. Set him off to the side as well. Okay, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and remove is the seat. The seat calls for, or is a, a nine millimeter. So take that guy, loosen him up. This also will allow this plate to come off so we can clean all the rust out of that so it doesn't continue to flake off. We're gonna be really careful because it's pretty rusted up, but so there's that. So there is a sealing washer on each side of that. So you wanna make sure those get reinstalled. Now to get our emulsion tube out, we're actually gonna use our retainer 
you know, thread it in just a couple turns or a couple little turns there. So there's a gap. We'll just kind of tap on it until it drops down to kind of break that loose, our emulsion tube loose. Then you can just very gently push it out with a screwdriver. That'll slide right down in there. And there is our emulsion tube. So we wanna make sure we get that cleaned up very well. It's a very critical component. Set him off to the side. The only thing left to do is our idle mixture screw, which is right here. Now these are counted by the amount of turns in. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is thread this guy in and count the amount of turns. Which he was kind of stuck, but we've got a half, one, half, two, and a quarter. So you want to remember that. And you're also going to want to set these the exact same per carburetor. So we'll go ahead and we'll back that guy out. Don't forget the little spring. These springs are pretty easy to lose. I'll set him off. And the last step you're going to want to do is go ahead and remove this guy right here. Uh, that just opens up a passage that needs to be cleaned out. So take your flathead screwdriver, remove that guy, and set him off to the side. Now that is as far as you need to go in disassembling this carburetor. This guy with the spring right here just runs your idle control so you're your slide comes down and rests on that. Um, there's no need re reason to remove it. There's nothing back behind there, and so that just gives you a good starting point to set your idle when you um, put it back together. Now, on our in the float side of things, these the float bowl, I should say. There's two floats that ride on this arm. Uh, they're even labeled as up. We'll set them off to the side. This one's got a little guy that holds us on, so we want to try to remove that without losing it and wrecking it. And also without pulling the rod out of the carb body. So there's that guy right there. We'll set him off to the side and try not to lose it. And that'll allow your other float to come up. You want to make sure there's no fuel in these. They feel nice and light, not, uh, not absorb too much fuel. And then there's all that junk down in there. So what I like to use is a product called Engine Tuner. Um, it is a Johnson Evinrude product you can get it at a johnson Evernew dealer um it's actually designed to dissolve internal engine uh, carbon but it works really great for cleaning carburetors so we'll go ahead and we'll soak this down you can see the, the junk bubbling up there and what i like to do is i put all my small parts in that uh, you don't have to use the engine tuner you can use any other uh carburetor cleaning solvent that's just my preference so we'll put all our small parts into that, and swish it around, our main jet, that little plug, we'll even put this plate in there with our seat. We're gonna remove these um, ceiling washers before we put that in, but we'll go ahead and we'll drop that in there, that plate, our pilot jet, swish it around. Okay, and again, we'll go ahead and we'll put another dose of that in. We'll also fill all our orifices on this carburetor with the same solution. So that's gonna go ahead and sit for a couple of hours, um, or an hour, hour, two hours, depending on uh, how long it takes to kind of get all that junk loosened up, and I'll get back with you guys. Okay guys, so a good thing to do while your carburetors are um, soaking in your solution is to go ahead and start getting the fuel pumped out of the fuel tank. Let me show you what we're doing here. So what I run is an electronic fuel pump, just like you'd run in a, a vehicle and out of the tank electronic fuel pump that I pump into a waste gas container and then I have a barrel out back that I put bad fuel, but this is what we're pumping out of there. You can see the water already separating out on the bottom um, so obviously it's not going to run very well in that, and that is why we have all that rust in the carburetor. So obviously very important to do this step. Uh, it doesn't matter how good you clean your carburetor if you're running that through it. So 
We're gonna go ahead, this is gonna take a little bit of time, then we'll put some fresh fuel in, kind of slosh it around, and uh, pump it back out. So, again guys, very important step. Don't forget to do that. Okay guys, another thing to take a look at is your fuel pickup tube inside of your tank. Now this machine actually has two of them, but as you can see, that line is completely rotten, and the uh, the clunk and the or the fuel strainer that goes on the end um, was just laying in the tank. So we're gonna go ahead and replace them with brand new fuel line, reinstall our clunk. And yeah, so definitely something to pay attention to. This would have disintegrated and kept going into the carburetor and plugging it up as well as these fuel lines will actually ride up on top of the fuel when you're going through the snow and you'll you'll suck air um, and just won't run right. So it's another thing to take a look at while you're waiting on your uh, while you're waiting on your carburetors to soak. Okay, so we've had everything soaking in here for a couple hours now. As you can see, it's pretty clean. So we're gonna go ahead and dump out this solution and make wash everything down with uh, with brake cleaner. rest on the paper towel here. Now when I'm done cleaning something, I like to put everything on a fresh paper towel, keep all the dirty stuff on one side and the clean stuff on the other. So and we'll go ahead and we'll rinse everything out really well. And then I use compressed air to dry it. So I've got a chemical safe container down here. And as you can see, that's nice and clean there. So there's a little bit of junk in the back. We'll make sure we get rid of that. It's looking good and we'll set that aside. Now our jet, so this is our pilot jet here. Now you wanna be careful not to run anything through this jet, like a drill bit um, or a uh, like a torch tip cleaner is real common. That will actually oversize the jet and make it not flow the amount of fuel that it's supposed to. So we'll go ahead and we'll we'll spray that out with some brake cleaner here. And then a little shot of compressed air. We'll see if we can see through it. I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera or not. Yep, you can see you can see through that real well. So we'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll do the same thing with our main jet. So here's our main jet here. Same thing, a little bit of compressed air. And that's all, all good to go. So just keep going through and doing all your parts, your emulsion tube, uh, everything until everything's all nice and clean and you can see light through everything. Okay guys, so once you have all your small parts cleaned up over here, your, your bowl is clean. There's a couple other components that need to be cleaned. So the main carburetor body, as you can see, I haven't rinsed this one out yet, but you wanna rinse out uh, where your, your seat goes for your needle and seat assembly. Flush that back out for your fuel in. You also wanna make sure you um, force brake cleaner and compressed air through where your pilot jet goes, through the emulsion tube, um, through the other parts back here, and then also in through where your idle mixture screw goes and make sure it all is, is good and clear. Um, like I said, run brake cleaner and compressed air through all of that. Um, the other thing that you're gonna wanna do a little bit differently is your needle for your needle and seat. Now in a perfect world, we would be re uh, getting a new needle as well as a new bowl gasket. Um, this customer here is a little bit cost sensitive, so we're trying to keep the cost down. We're gonna give it a try with our using these parts. Um, they look good enough, but what you wanna do is you wanna use carbon choke cleaner for this and just put a little bit on a rag and then run that Viton tip on it until there's no more black junk that comes off of there. So I get that good and clean like that. Now, if you did buy a new needle, this tip will be gray when you get it. And what you're gonna wanna do is the same thing and remove that black coating so that it will 
um, seal properly. Otherwise that black coating kind of rubs off and it you won't get a good seal to your seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that this carb body here all cleaned up for you. And then we'll go through the assembly process. All right guys, so now that we've got our carburetor all nice and clean, carb bowl's all nice and clean, we're ready to reassemble. So um, as you saw, I had to use the wire, or not a wire wheel, but a sanding disc to clean this up the best that I could. Um, so that'll be good, there's nothing flaking off it, so it'll be fine. So yeah, the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is um, put our emulsion tube in. And as you can see, there's a groove here in the emulsion tube, and there's also a pin inside the carburetor that that has to be lined up in. So it can be kind of tricky, but you wanna drop it in to here, or I should say set it, not drop it, but set it in to place. This kind of goes down like that. You can see, get that pin lined up. Can be a bit tricky, but And just kind of presses in there. Okay, like that. Then you can go ahead and install your emulsion tube retainer, which is this guy here again. So it just threads into the top of the emulsion tube. Just like so. And that guy there is a 10 millimeter, so we'll go ahead and snug him down. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is double check that our pilot jet is clear. And I like to put that in next. So you can see it's nice and clean. So we'll go ahead and install that. So that guy goes down into here. Put him down, now make sure you tighten it right away, otherwise it's easy to forget. Take your little flathead screwdriver and tighten him down. Like so, you don't gotta go crazy tight, just just snug is fine. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install our main jet. Again, double checking that it's clean and clear. Once again, thread that guy in like that. And he gets torqued down or snug down with a six millimeter. Again, not getting too crazy on tight, so it's gonna look like that when it's done. All right, now we'll go ahead and do our our seat. Again, double checking that the seat is clean and clear, nice and shiny. Um, so the seat, <coughs> again, we would normally be replacing these, but we did not get a carburetor kit for this one. So it goes one O-ring like that, and this plate goes on like that with the squared off edge like this. So that goes like that there. And then your second um, ceiling washer goes like that. And then all that threads right down onto here in between the towers, and that gets tightened down with a nine millimeter. Hand threading it in first, and then snugging it down. So it'll look like that. When it's done, make sure it's snug. Okay, and then we'll take our needle, inspecting that it's, that Viton tip is clean, put him in, and then our little, our needle retaining clip. Go ahead and clip that on. 
Okay, and now for our float um, lever here. So remember the float lever goes on stepping down like that. So go ahead and put that on. Making sure that that pin is lined up and you can usually just press them back in with a screwdriver like that. So that's all seated. Now the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is put our floats, we'll set that aside. We'll put our floats back into our carburetor. So the, the pin goes um, down, that comes out of the float, uh, down like this, There's even says up, and they face to the inside, like so. Then we'll go ahead and put our, our little caps on the top of the, the posts here. If they'll go back on. These aren't a huge deal, guys. These are just for uh, assembly. If they don't go on or it doesn't quite work out, it is, that's okay. Um, so let's see here. Remember this carburetor when we took it apart only had one on it actually, and the other carburetor only had one on it as well. So we'll just go ahead and just run it with one, which like I said, all it is is so if you tip it upside down, these don't fall out. Obviously, installed on the machine, that's that's not going to happen, so there's no issues there. So we'll set that aside. So what you want to take a look at here is with the, with the um, float lever resting down, you want to make sure that the arm in the post makes a 90 degree angle. If this is too... If your lever is too far down or too far up, that can affect the fuel height in the float bowl. And um, if the if it's too far uh, down, in other words, like this, it'll create more fuel into the carburetor that can cause your engine to run rich. <coughs> Excuse me, as well as um, actually overflow out of the overflow tube. Uh, opposite ways, if it's too lean like this, your engine can actually run out of fuel at wide open and run lean in general. So it's very critical to check that, especially if you do replace the needle, uh, you'll find that you have to adjust that. The needles will have a slight variance in height. So go ahead with that. And what you wanna do is um, kind of set your carp, kind of put everything together at an angle so you can watch how it's all going together, make sure everything's getting along. Should go in real nice. If you have to force anything, it's, it's not right. So we'll go ahead and we'll Put all our screws back into place here. You can see we've got a couple other components after we put the screws back in. Get back with you in a second. Okay guys, so we've got our, our screws reinstalled. And when you're doing that, you wanna go, you don't wanna tighten one side all the way down. You kinda wanna go in a crisscross pattern and kinda work your way around a couple times to make sure that bowl um, seats back down evenly and properly. So next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and reinstall our mixture screw, our idle mixture screw. Um, so that guy again threads right down into there. Kind of hand tighten that first, make sure the spring is on there. And again, we want to run this all the way down until it's snug. It doesn't have to be tight, but just kind of until it wants to stop right there. And then we want to back it out our two and a quarter turns. So we'll go half, one, half, two, and a quarter. And I have the other one set to the exact same. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is go ahead and install this guy here that just plugs this orifice in here. Let's set him in there. Make sure you don't cross thread it. It kind of, it's pretty easy to get him to go in crooked, but there we go. Go and tighten him down. Again, don't have to get crazy tight, just snug. So that's how to clean and reassemble a, a Makuni carburetor out of a um, Ski-Doo Summit 583 1994 model. So the next thing we'll do is we'll reinstall the carburetors into the machine and we will go ahead and uh, show you how to sync them. Okay guys, so another really important thing to do is to make sure you clean off this needle 
Um, this needle right here is what slides down inside the emulsion tube on your carburetor and meters the amount of fuel that comes up, as well as make sure the slide is cleaned off. You can see a bunch of yellow sticky residue on there. Um, so we wanna make sure we get all that clean. So what I do is I just, again, take our, our engine tuner, spray it down a little bit, and just kind of scrub it off with a paper towel real nice. But, um, and especially on that needle, you wanna get all that, that yellow junk off of there. So as you can see, I've got a little ways to go on that, but uh, it's very important to get that good and clean, so. Okay, so now that we've got everything good and clean, we'll go ahead and reinstall them back into the machine here. Okay, again, paying attention to what one was our mag side and what one was our PTO side. Okay, so now that we have our, all of our vacuum and our fuel lines reconnected, um, our primer lines reconnected, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and reinstall our throttle slides that we had cleaned earlier. Um, something you're gonna wanna notice is there's a groove in the one side and just a slight notch in the other. And what you're gonna wanna do is this notch here is what your idle control screw runs in. And so you'll wanna line that up with the, um, as you're looking down at it, it would be with the left side of the carburetor. And there's also a little, a dowel pin that comes on the inside from the right that rides in that groove. So you wanna make sure you uh, align that properly as you slide them back down, as well as make sure that your needle ends up going back down through the center of your emulsion tube, not off to the side. But you'll know right away if it's off to the side because it, uh, it won't go down, so. They should just drop down real, real nice and smooth like that there, and then you're good to go. So we'll go ahead and we'll tighten these caps down. Very carefully, again, not to cross-thread them. So there's the PTO side. Go ahead and do our mag side here, making sure everything gets lined up nice.
Okay, so there is, there's that step there. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video to be uh, helpful and useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and drop them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them as soon okay, as guys, I can. Okay, guys, now that we have that installed, uh, what you're going to want to do next have a good is one. sink the carburetor.